working near Wamochil Sinaloa, and he happened to meet my grandmother, Mother Pineda's uh, family, and uh, my mother, uh, Chona Pineda, and um, they they were married in the process of time. My mother was a beautiful young lady with a sharp sense of humor and uh, great personality and a great ability for the hus hospi for hospitality. But she uh, did not learn to dance, and it was her sister, um, Sara, who uh, did the dancing with my father. The work on the railroad was finished, and my father decided that he would go back to the Mormon colonies where my grandfather and grandmother and family were. And uh, they arrived there just a few days before the exodus of the Mormon people back into the United States. I was born at El Paso. That was in 19, in August of 1912. My grandfather had a great, you might say a consuming desire to come back to Utah and especially to Delta. Oh, he was uh, great on recounting the glories and the praises of Delta, Utah. And um, my, my father and mother and I came along with his family. And uh, my father worked for one Mr. Uh, Hickman, as I remember, out in the Abraham area. Um, I'm getting ahead of my story a little bit because my father said they arrived here in Delta in the night time and uh, he uh, didn't sleep well the rest of the night with an uh, anxiety to look out in the daylight and see what Delta looked like. And uh, he said, that it was grease woods and alkali, and it looked very forbidding to him. And he uh, worked and stayed, ar stayed around and worked l long enough to find out whether his father was uh, really in earnest about staying when uh, he uh, made up his mind that his father was in earnest about staying here. He um, decided that uh, it is time to go, and uh, he took his wife and myself, which consisted of our family. At that time, we went back to California, and uh, we were there for uh, several years, and finally in the time of the First World War, along about 1918, we uh, went back, well, it was really before that, it was about 1917. We went down to Wamuchil, Sinaloa, and were there about three years, maybe a little more. And uh, my father worked for an American mining company there, uh, s transporting the supplies to the mining property and also uh, bringing back with his wagon and team the uh, concentrate ores that were con uh, mined there and were shipped back to the United States. When we first arrived in Wamuchil, it was such a change in the food that uh, we were slow in getting accustomed to eating the tortillas. I didn't like the tortillas, and I told Mother not to 
not to make any. And of course, we had to have something to eat. But it wasn't long before that uh, we were ready to eat the tortillas and the pan and the beans and the and the, the soups and the various things. They're really very tasty that the Mexicans make. And uh, we got to where we really enjoyed them. Across the lane from our house, we, we bought a, a lot and uh, with a corral and a yard and beautiful flowers and a well that we used to draw water out of with a bucket, a pulley and a rope. And we had uh, this brick house with uh, the front portal and, and uh, we could um, park wagons or automobiles underneath it. Well, at this school, there was a school across the lane to the really across the street to the south of us and uh, a lady teacher taught the uh, beginners uh, in the uh, ABCs and uh, how to do a little well to start to write we had the slates and the slate pencils and uh, in learning this ABCs in a little booklet. I was rather slow about learning and uh, the teacher was not very patient and uh, very much on the old order that if someone didn't learn it is because they didn't want to learn and so they were to be punished. And so in punishing me she thumped me on the head with her knuckles and uh, uh, fiery spirit that I am, I didn't take kindly to it. I picked up my my slate, my slate pencil, my uh, ABC booklet in my chair and uh, I was making a, started to make a dash home and I, I got out about midway in the street and my mother uh, hearing the commotion and uh, the teacher calling after me uh, met me halfway and um, escorted, escorted me back to the schoolroom. This was a mixed class of boys and girls in the school. The summertime came on and uh, school ended. But that didn't end my school in Mexico. There were schools for boys in Mexico in the in Wamuchil and also school a school for girls and I was enrolled in the one for boys in the next term of school and um, brother Clifford went to school too and along with us my cousin Ernesto uh, Borrego school quarters faced the east and um, the um, doorways or the, the, the openings, as one might say, were arches, those beautiful arches that are so characteristic of the Mexican architecture. And also the floor was of cement and uh, very, very slick. And uh, we, uh, of course, had our own chairs and our own uh, book, and our own slate and our own slate pencil. And uh, in this hall, which actually it was a hall, um, there were three great boxes of uh, little round candies with uh, the caraway seed in the middle of them. I remember one day working out an arithmetic problem that I didn't quite understand and uh, this man teacher uh, had me get a few of these candies and uh, he says now eat so many of them I forget the number and then count how many you have left and that's, that'll be your answer and uh, I thought this was a, a very nice way to to work out a problem. 
In general, I was a good student, and uh, I liked learning, and I, I liked history. And now comes the exciting part. When I was just a little boy, one Christmas, I received a set of tin dishes, enough so we could have a little meal. And uh, not far away, there was a little boy that was able to walk around pretty well. I was more or less a toddler. And uh, he would come over and play with me. We'd have these dishes all spread out like we were having a meal. And uh, he would very uh, uh, stealthily get one dish at a time and and uh, put it within his reach and out of my reach. And finally, I would have one dish left and uh, he would um, go to take that away from me and with the intention of getting the dishes and taking them home with him. And uh, I would be hanging on to it and I'd be seeing that I was going to lose it and I would be hanging on with both hands and uh, when I would see that I would I was about to lose it, I would grab this little boy by the hair and yank him down and take the dish away from him and get the other the dishes and spread them out again and, and we'd start all over playing again. This happened repeatedly, time after time, and my father was a little ways away, unbeknownst to me, I was very unconscious of it, and finally when this had happened, why, he he was so tickled that his young son, being so uh, eager to defend himself and did it so uh, ably, even though uh, at great odds, that he would roll and laugh until tears came into his eyes and run down his cheeks and said that that kept on going until finally it, uh, this little boy he had his hair pulled enough and cried enough and tried it so many times that he was unsuccessful that he gave up and went home. Now, so much for that little story, but uh, the uh, fighting in the school uh, commenced because I was gringo and the uh, Mexican boys uh, had uh, a bad uh, a bad experience or a, or a bad remembrance because of the war in Texas with the Mexican people and the war with the, the United States and uh, they uh, they kindled a, a hatred and this hatred uh, had not subsided and uh, uh, likely has not subsided even, subsided even until this day. My brother Clifford and I were in many a fight with three or four of the Mexican boys, and uh, we never really got hurt very bad, but uh, we, uh, we were uh, very... We had to be defensive and aggressive both, and... Uh, we had lots of fights. I remember one day the teacher, Constancio Rodriguez, read the uh, whole school a, le a story uh, out of a book. And uh, the line of this story is something like this, that there was a Mexican on one side of the river and he was captured by an American officer and this officer uh, grabbed him and threw him up in the air and shot him and uh, he landed a half a mile on the other side of the river nearby. And of course this is like a uh, fuse to a, a dynamite charge as far as making more trouble for us. Um, 
I've thought since, what a foolish thing to have done. And of course, uh, he, uh, he didn't realize that he was doing such a foolish thing at the time. The war ended in, in 1918, in the fall, and uh, not long after that, in the 1919, we made preparations and sold our, our lot, our house, our property, and uh, our wagon and, and uh, mules and, and horses, and um, came to uh, Los Angeles, California. My father looked for work around Los Angeles, California, and uh, he uh, found that different jobs and uh, about the best job that he could find would be something that made $100 a month. And uh, he um, decided that he couldn't live with the family on $100 a month. And he uh, corresponded with his folks, my grandparents, here in Delta, and uh, he hadn't seen them for several years, so he decided, it was decided that we come to Delta and uh, spend the Christmas with them. And uh, that was in the Christmas of 1919. And in 1923, about February, my grandfather and grandmother and their family, uh, two daughters, Jenny and uh, Dora, uh, moved by horses and wagons to Moapa Valley to a place called Logandale. And uh, so we came to celebrate Christmas with them, and they left us here celebrating. and. Uh, in 1937, my grandfather passed away, and uh, my grandmother lived for years later. My um, uncle, who was their young unmarried son, uh, I say young, he, he was some 60 years old and never married. He, he uh, was red-haired, and uh, just before he died, his hair turned gray. I never saw him after his hair turned gray, but he has also passed away. Upon arriving in Delta, my uh, grandfather, grandmother, hitched up their team. They lived out some nine miles northwest of Delta at a place called Woodrow. And they came in, and I well remember how what a snowy day it was, this wagon and team, and we went home with them and lived with them uh, in their house and went to school about a half a mile away in a two-room schoolhouse. There were eight grades. There was the, from the first to the eighth grade. And of course, I started in the first grade. My sister Mary and my brother Clifford went to school that year. And uh, what a change it was. We couldn't speak English as before we had been in Mexico and we couldn't speak the Spanish. We had learned the Spanish and had forgotten the English. And upon starting in school at Woodrow, we were unable to speak the English. And uh, that was a cause of many sorrows and much pain and anguish. The first year, we got in about half of the school term at school, and the next year, 
we started in at the beginning of the school term and I went from the first grade to the third grade and here also we had many fights. We were picked on, cuffed around, called damn Mexicans, Mexicans, greasers, and uh, we had a sad time in school, really. We also had many fights. And uh, we often went home on the run. My father got tired of us going home on the run and uh, not, not being able to uh, compete with overwhelming odds, that is, numbers. And uh, one summer he sent to Sears and Roebuck and got a new pair of boxing gloves so my brother and I could, could box, and we could box with our friends when they came to visit us. And we practiced up all that summer. And we got to where we were quite proficient with our hands. And uh, the next year at school, the very first day, the teacher had the uh, boys boxing in the hallway of the school. And uh, we put the gloves on with the different ones. And uh, we began to get respect from then on. Uh, we did have a few more fights after that, but my father's theory was I sent off and got a pair of boxing, a set of boxing gloves, so my boys could go to school in peace. Young people can be very mean to people in a condition that we were in, where we didn't know the language and where we didn't understand the ways. And um, I have thought that it takes three to um, control a situation like that. The parents, the teachers, and uh, we had our troubles, but time passed. And um, when we went to high school, we went on the bus, and uh, there was a change, really, and it was for the better. And um, at about this time, I, we uh, were able to go to dances and learn to dance, and, and uh, we would go to Hinckley. Uh, they didn't know any difference. We looked the same as anybody else, we, white as anybody else, and uh, we were readily accepted over there, and we went to dances and, and um, dates with girls until um, I was 20 years old, and I went on a mission to the eastern states for two years and come back. Of course, I was altogether different. I'd learned uh, how to associate with people and how to overcome uh, uh, social failings and uh, life was better and uh, I uh, learned to to sell I sold many things and I went up to Salt Lake in the fall of 1936 and uh, spent about 15 years up there selling. I've had my half interest in uh, an Austin agency with another fellow, and then I had a car lot of my own, bought and sold new uh, used cars, not new, not new ones, used ones. And um, life, is, life has been good. In 1938, I met my wife, and we were married in 1939 on my birthday in August. And um, we had seven children, all wonderful children. We are very proud of them. Our oldest one was beginning to talk when I was taken into the war 
when into Camp Roberts at, in California, trained there for 17 weeks before going over to England and uh, being there for several weeks before going over in the invasion just after the uh, 6th of June in 1945. In England and in France, I saw much destruction and experience, very dangerous experiences. And uh, I was wounded on the 11th of July of that year and uh, was evacuated uh, after losing four big puddles of blood on the ground. I was evacuated to a tent hospital and uh, right away, within two or three days, I was shipped back, the hospital ship, to England. And I was in several places in hospitals in England. And finally, I was so glad to get out of England because I was injured in the arm and through the throat, a very bad nerve injury. And uh, it being so foggy so much of the time in England, it was a very uh, painful stay there. And I was so glad when I was able to um, be shipped home on the luxury liner, which had been made into a troop and hospital ship, uh, the Queen Elizabeth, which is a English ship, that landed in uh, New York in about five days' time. And from there, they, we were distributed to the various localities. And the officer, who was also a doctor, said, where are you from, soldier? And I said, from Utah. Utah it is. And I was shipped to, to Bushnell.